We will be discussing today uh, other sexually transmitted infections that we'd like to discuss in our live session. Okay, so let's start. Here are all the list of your sexually transmitted infection. Under viruses, we have your herpes simplex virus and your HIV, which will be discussed in your live session. Uh, for the fungi, you have your candida, and this will be covered in one of the pre-reported lectures. Under bacteria, we have your syphilis, venerea, chancroid, granuloma inquinale, bacterial vaginosis, and lymphogranuloma clinoria. This pre-recorded lecture will focus specifically on chancroid, granuloma inguinale, and bacterial vaginosis. Your syphilis and venerea will be covered in the live session, and your lymphogranuloma venereum uh, will be covered under the pre-recorded lecture, Glamidia, Mycoplasma, and Uriaplasma. So let us start with your Haemophilus Dupreni, uh, the organism that causes your chancroid. Hemophilus Dupreni is a gram-negative Coccobacillus with an incubation period of 1 to 14 days. It begins as a pustule with surrounding erythema that eventually ruptures to form an ulcer. Okay, uh, they may be multiple, sharply circumscribed ulcers, and may coalesce to form giant lesion that is painful and bleeds easily. Okay, the difference between your chancroid and your chancre is that your chancre, which is caused by your primary syphilis infection, is hard, uh, hard with a raised edge, and your chancroid is soft with a ragged edge. You should be able to differentiate the two. Okay. The treatment consists of your acetromycin, ceftriaxone, and uh, alternative treatments with ciprofloxacin and erythromycin. Now we go to your Klebsiella granulomatis, which causes your donovanosis. Okay, so your Klebsiella, which is uh, formerly named as Kalima probacterium, has an incubation period of about seven weeks. In the man, it causes a uh, uh, infection in the previous, coronal sulcus, frenum, and the gland penis. While in the women, it causes infection in the labia minora, crochet, and your cervix. Okay? It begins as a papule or a subcutaneous nodule that ulcerates with minor trauma. Okay? This uh, causes beefy red ulcer that bleeds easily, and it has an inguinal involvement in 10% of the cases. You see, have the same treatment as your uh, chancroid, which is acetromycin. In preservatory, you will see Donovan bodies. Okay, remember this, Donovan bodies, Klebsiella, Cardinopolis. Now we go to your Gardnerella vaginalis, uh, the one which causes your bacterial vaginosis. Okay, this is a very uh, favorite exam question. Okay, so Gardnerella vaginalis is a gram variable Coccobacillus that occurs when there is low numbers of uh, lactobacilli in the normal vaginal flora. Okay, so you all know that your lactobacilli keeps your vaginal pH at less than 4.5. So when you are you have depletion of your lactobacilli, then you have this infection. So that is uh, outright exam question. Another exam question was, what is representative of bacterial vaginosis? So we have here your blue cells. Okay. So your blue cells are your cells, okay, surrounded with squamous epithelial cells. Okay, here are your nucleus. If you can see in the lower right-hand corner, these are normal vaginal epithelial cells surrounded with the bacteria, okay? So how do you diagnose uh, bacterial vaginosis? Um, the patient will come to you with a complaint of vaginal odor that is fishy or foul smelling. They will complain of mild to moderate vaginal discharge that is sometimes grayish in color, okay? They will, uh, in, on examination, you will find discharge at the enteroitus. It is visible on the labia menorah. It is grayish, thin, homogeneous discharge with a pungent odor, and the vaginal pH of five or more is diagnostic, okay? Because the normal pH is less than 4.5, okay, 4.6. So for clinical diagnosis, we have the Amsel criteria. Uh, we have to satisfy three out of four. In the diagram, on the right side, you have your Amsel criteria. So you must have at least three of the following findings. A vaginal pH of more than 
a presence of 20% per high power field blue cells on wet mount examination, positive amine or weak test, and a homogeneous non viscous milky white discharge adherent to the vaginal walls. So you have to satisfy at least three of four of the arm cell criteria. Okay, we have another uh, way of diagnosing bacterial vaginosis, but lately it is not uh, being used, okay? We have your, aside from your abscess criteria, we have your Nugent scoring on, gra on vaginal gram stain, okay? When you have a score of 0 to 3, that would be negative, 4 to 6 is intermediate, and 7 to 10 is positive. So this is the criteria, okay? So you'll have to check which one is here, and then you score them, and then you um, interpret the score according to this. Your treatment is, of course, your metronidazole, 500 milligrams twice a day for seven days, or your 750 milligrams once a day, seven days extended release uh, preparation. And you can also use your metronidazole 0.75% in the form of a gel, and you have, can have your alternative treatment in the form of pinidazole and clindamycin. So that ends our lecture on other uh, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, the rest will be discussed in the live session. So in this um, pre-recorded lecture, it is important for you to remember especially bacterial vaginosis. It was, not, uh, it was discussed separately from the other because it is a gram variable. We cannot classify it according to gram positive or gram negative because it is gram variable of the bacilli. Okay, so that's your take home, and that's all. Good luck, and bye-bye. Coitus, and it's visible on the labium menorah. It is grayish, thin, homogeneous discharge with a pungent odor, and the vaginal pH of 5 or more is diagnostic, okay, because the normal pH is less than 4.5, okay, 4.6. So for clinical diagnosis, we have the AMSEL criteria. Uh, we have to satisfy three out of four. In the diagram, in the right side, you have your AMSEL criteria. So you must have at least three of the following findings. A vaginal pH of more than 4.5, a presence of 20% per high power field blue cells on wet mount examination, positive amine or weak test, and a homogeneous non viscous milky white discharge adherent to the vaginal walls. So you have to satisfy at least three of four of the arm cell criteria. Okay, we have another uh, way of diagnosing bacterial vaginosis, but lately it is not uh, being used, okay? We have your, aside from your arm cell criteria, we have your new check scoring on, gra on vaginal gram stain, okay? When you have a score of 0 to 3, that would be negative, 4 to 6 is intermediate, and 7 to 10 is positive. So this is the criteria, okay? So you'll have to check which one is here, and then you score them, and then you um, interpret the score according to this. Your treatment is, of course, your metronidazole, 500 milligrams twice a day for 7 days, or your 750 milligrams once a day, 7 days extended release, uh, preparation. And you can also use your metronidazole 0.75% in the form of a gel, and you have, can have your alternative treatment in the form of pinidazole and clindamycin. Okay. So that ends our lecture on other uh, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, the rest will be discussed in the live session. So in this um, pre-recorded lecture, it is important for you to remember especially bacterial vaginosis. It was not, uh, it was discussed separately from the other because it is a gram variable. We cannot classify it according to gram positive or gram negative because it is gram variable coccobacilli. Okay, so that's your take home and that's all. Good luck and bye-bye.